as a producer of Darlings, which is incredible. The brand, Edda Mama. Uh, your critical acclaim, box office love. Everybody seems to love you. Uh, must be hard to cope with, huh? Jeddah definitely loves you. Who loves her and Jeddah? Thank you. There's nothing hard about this. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. So, let's start at the beginning. Um, your parents are in the industry. Did that mean you started off young as a child actor? Was it destiny? Did they push you? Was it your own desire? <clears throat> Actually, quite the opposite. Um, in fact, I remember my mother very clearly saying that I did one film as a child artist, but my mum was very clear that, you know, I, if this is what you want to do in life, you um, do it when you're an adult. You focus on your studies and your childhood right now. And um, she wanted me to have that and experience that. And of course, when you have this big dream of becoming an actor, even if you come from a film family, there's no guarantee you're going, going to make it. What happened is I got called in to meet Karan for student of the year. Um, <laughs> While I was still in college, I was like in the 11th grade and I literally went from college which, which I was, which, which was in my school, so I had a uniform. I went in my uniform to his office <laughs> and um, I was much, I would say healthier. <laughs> um, I enjoyed eating french fries much more at that time and I was like, I look great, there's nothing wrong, like, you know, so I just walked into his office. I'm sure you did look great. No, I, 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 I truly believe I do, and I did. <laughs> um, I walked into his office and, you know, he said, okay, you're so charming in person, I'd, I'd like you to do an audition. So I, I didn't even know what audition was. I did like one audition just for like love before that for some ads. I didn't know what it was. I went in, I gave the audition and then the rest is history. <laughs> Do you remember what he asked you to audition? Or? Yeah, it was a scene um, from Wake Up Sid. Um, yeah, weird. <laughs> yes, it was really weird. I mean, that, uh, that's another story altogether. But um, actually, now I go back to this story. Do you all know that the first time that I met my now husband was when I was nine years old? <laughs> And actually, the one time my mother was okay for me to be a child actor was when I was nine because of Sanjay Leela Bansali because he was making a movie and I walked into his office and who was assisting Sanjay Leela Bansali at that time? Ranveer. <laughs> Obviously, that time he was not an actor so I didn't even know. I was not even looking at him. I was just looking at Sanjay Leela Bansali because <laughs> I was like, this is the director. I'm looking at him. I was at nine years old. I still had that, you know. Thing. But um, there's a photo of us from that audition that I did for that movie that we were going to do at that time, which I still have with me. Um, 
when you were on set, did you immediately fall in love with the profession? Did you think, this is it, this is the rest of my life? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I remember the first day of shoot was when we were shooting for Radha. And um, I had to walk down some stairs and take one dupatta off and look into camera like that. And Farah Khan was the choreographer. And I did the shot and she said, Oh, heroine! That was the... And I thought, Kit, matlab, this, like the cameras just keep rolling. I thought there were like 15 cameras rolling at the same time. And because I was rehearsing the song for one month, I just thought I would to perform the song like I would perform on a stage. And they'd keep shooting. I didn't know that we had to wait and do shot by shot and then there was sitting. So we were sitting for seven days shooting that song. I had no idea. In the middle of the song, I sprained my leg, I hurt my back, everything happened. But I think in that first schedule onwards itself, I it was daunting, it was very scary. Also because on day one of shoot, Karan made sure that there was from, you know, Yash Chopra to Shah Rukh Khan to you know Rishi Kapoor to everybody they were all there on set to congratulate us and wish us because we were three newcomers so as nervous as we were I think the fact that there were so many stalwarts in the room made us even more nervous but yeah I think from that moment on I realized that I am my most present self in front of the camera we often talk about Indian stars who have to know how to dance, sing, perform, change their emotion. But also, increasingly so, you have to know how to perform in many different languages. Is that something you like to do? Is there a language you found or a role particularly hard to get a grasp of? Um, I think I... Um, I don't know whether it's just like something but some people have it or some people don't have it but i was um i used to always like like to imitate like the sheer like belief that she had and she was like you're my boyfriend nobody's touching you or talking to you like you know you don't sometimes you have these thoughts in your head in life but you don't really put them out on in you know on the forefront because you're a person so you get to like live by you as her character it was quite it was quite out there but i really enjoyed it <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you hit this height and then like all of us we go through covid what was that like for you were you frustrated that you couldn't perform or happy to be at home i think none of what i felt mattered at that time um i think um, i um with god's grace have um, a very privileged comfortable life so i don't think i have the i should not have the audacity to even sit and complain or even talk about my feelings i think there were much worse situations for people and um you know uh, all over the world can you tell me a bit about that part rani was again like i think for me i was really like missing that quintessential like bollywood film with song and dance and literally dancing in the mountains which we did um, and it it just so happened at the same time Karan was meant to make another film which with then the pandemic happening did not go through and he through, um, through the pandemic had the, had the idea of doing a, just a happy light love story because he just felt like the world possibly needs something like light and like you know just just full of love um, so he wrote Rocky or Rani Ki Vrim Kahani and I was like yes yes let's do it let's have fun um, and I find myself relating most to Rani as a character of my because I mean all her beliefs, her values, the person that she is. I mean I think she's way more outspoken than I will ever be in my life. Um, I'm still a little bit guarded with my opinions and stuff like that. But like in terms of the personality and the strength that she has, I, I really relate with that. But I think the shooting experience became so easy for me because all I had to do was respond to Ranveer Singh aka Rocky. <laughs> So, he was so interesting. He just like became this person in the way he was speaking. And I was like, people come and talk to me about my performance. Now, but I didn't do anything. I was just looking at Rocky and like whatever Ranveer talking. And I'm like, there came my performance. Cause I was just like, he was so unique <laughs> and so, so sweet and so like lovable. And um, I really feel like that just, that just became the energy on set is that we were all playing off Rocky and you know, our 
scenes and stuff and the way it was written and we just had a blast doing it. Speaking of having a blast, there was that small film, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> how, how does that change like the Indian film industry when something crosses over like that and then you get, people look to India and then they go, oh, we need Indian actors who can play on things like Netflix, which obviously was why RR got the biggest success. And then you're in Heart of Stone all of a sudden next to Guy Orgasso Bernal, and you're bringing these roles, not just for Indian audiences, but for world audiences. And all of a sudden, Indian actors are global superstars without having necessarily... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it just like actually shows how small the world can be and how if your content is wide enough, it'll, it'll, it'll go the distance and it'll really travel. And I remember while I was shooting for Heart of Stone, RRR was like being widely consumed in theaters across, across London, America, everywhere. And um, this was pre, pre the Oscar wave and all of that, but there was a feeling that it's just, people are just loving the film and really just enjoying the experience. Um, I was, you know, fortunate and honored to be a small part of that film. Uh, but I think not just me, every other actor from India, every person felt extremely proud, but also were not surprised because if it's created a wave in India, then why not create a wave world over? Um, so I think <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a cherry on the cake, but the cake was built already. And then you start becoming an ambassador for clothing brands like Gucci. It's just, uh, it's just you become international, exactly, in a way. And all of a sudden, when we're at the Red Sea International Film Festival, we're talking always about who we can bring from India. And your name was top of the list. How does that happen? I feel very... Um happy and grateful to be here at the Red Sea Film Festival. I think it's I mean, three years in is so so well organized, so like well put together. It's already one of the most prestigious festivals to be a part of in the year. So yeah, huge kudos to everyone related to the Red Sea Film Festival. But I think, um, and I'm, I'm not, sound, I'm, I don't mean to sound pompous or anything like that, but I genuinely, or, or over modest or anything like that, but I think the even when I, I've said this before, but when a, grand, a brand like Gucci, for example, wants me, I don't think they want me, they want India, right? Because I'm representing a certain maybe demographic or a, I would say booming demographic in India. So again, I don't give myself credit. I give the, my country credit and the just how, you know, fast things are moving and how much interest there is there. And speaking about being international, I think we all are international because we're all a part of one globe. So when people say you're going global and all, I'm like, aren't we a part of one globe? So aren't we all going global? You know? There's going global and there's going global in the superstar way that you do. Yeah, I mean, that's like I say, like it's, I'm, I'm grateful for the love and praise, but I really feel like it's just a matter of shifting the perspective and just looking at it from, if you're really looking at it from the moon, we all are in the same space. Um, and I know that we have to rush off pretty soon because we have an award ceremony to go to tonight. But can you tell us before we go what we can expect to see from you in the upcoming months? Oh, upcoming months? Yeah. Oh, like this. <laughs> uh, so Jigra releases next year. Um, I do shoot some films next year that I can't talk about right now. Um, mm, yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but it should be out there soon. <laughs>